Okay, so here we go. This is round one, nematodes versus slugs. Now, you can use nematodes against a whole range of different pests. In fact, cop chafers, daddy long legs, crane flies, and a whole range of other pests like vine weevil. But in this example today, we're just going to focus and concentrate on how they work with slugs. So this is what they look like. Nematodes are one of the most abundant creatures in the living soil. They're an essential part of the soil food web. Some of them feed on plants, some feed on dead organic matter, and others are parasites of other living organisms. Just as there are bad bacteria and good bacteria from a human point of view, so there are bad nematodes and good nematodes in the soil. The nematodes that feed on living plant material could be considered to be bad nematodes, for example, potato eelworm. However, nematodes that kill other plant pests are considered good nematodes, e.g. the nematode that kills slugs. And nematodes basically are tiny, tiny little worms. And um, as I say, they're very common in the whole food web in the soil. And I think one of the things that as organic growers we learn to appreciate is the extent to which the soil is a living organism made up of a whole range of different components of the ecosystem. So as we mentioned earlier, there's a whole range of different nematodes for different targets. Things for ants, things for other soft body creatures, for everything from caterpillars to vine weevil and chafer bugs. Now it's interesting that the way that they come, they come in an inert paste, which you basically mix with water and you can pour it onto the ground with either a watering can or a hose. You basically water it onto the, 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 the ground. Um, the paste will stay stable in the fridge for sort of two to three weeks, but it's a good idea not to order it too far in advance before you need it and to not really think about using it until the soil temperature is up to about eight or ten degrees. It's not that the plant things will die, but like all sort of, uh, you know, non um, mammalian animals, their speed at which they operate depends very much on the temperature. So if the weather's cold, they won't do very much. So you just have to bear that in mind. But um, the whole sort of process of dissolving it up and watering it on is quite robust and uh, they are actually sort of really very effective. So here are the nematodes actually in the paste and you can see that they're moving around. As we mentioned earlier, they're just tiny, tiny little worms. And um, you know, you can just see them squirming around in the paste in which they come. You apply them, as I say, by dissolving them in the watering can and watering them on the ground. So this is what the nematodes do to the slug. On the left, you can see a newly infected slug with a swollen mantle, and on the right, a healthy version. Parasitic nematodes seek out suitable hosts by swimming in the thin film of water on soil particles and they locate their host by detecting carbon dioxide and other waste products. Once they find a host, they enter the body cavity through any hole they can find. Now, in the case of these nematodes, they carry bacteria with them, which in fact kills the host within hours, and the nematodes can grow and pre reproduce within the broth which the, they produce. So the next generation of infected juveniles leaves the dead host and moves on in search of fresh hosts. So you see, it is actually quite grisly. I think if I was a slug, I might take the metaldehyde. But um, as you can see, they're very effective and they sort of finish the slugs off really quite rapidly. See, nematodes will multiply and spread, providing they have plenty of food and the soil is warm and wet. The slugs will die within a few days and their bodies decompose underground. I've never actually had the time to go spotting the dead ones. All you get is a decline in the damage. And here you can see, we get slugs pretty well all the year round in the glass house. And our biggest victims are the vic winter lettuce and the pak choy. So here's our pak choy battleground. You can see the slugs have been having a field day there. So we treat them in the autumn and early spring, whenever we have time. The slugs do come back over time. Possibly the eggs come in on the compost, possibly from the damp areas around the wall. But um, you'll find that the sort of nematodes will give you a good respite for a while and eventually, obviously, you will just have to treat it again. But you can see that uh, it's quite effective as a natural means of controlling slug damage. So that gives you a quick overview of how nematodes, what they look like and how they work against slugs. 
they will work against snails to some extent but obviously the snail doesn't have so many exposed surfaces for the nematodes to get to work at so they're not quite so effective but as you can see it's a very good example of the way that you can use predators which are already in the soil but by just topping them up you get a better result in keeping the amount of damage that you have to your own crops to a minimum.